What up, what up, ladies and gentlemen? We've got a Terran versus Terran for you here on Axiom. It's the Shambler versus Newt. These games were actually played a little while ago, so they won't have the new replay feature that I've added since then, which includes things like minimap pings when tech goes live and stuff like that. But despite the fact that this is an older game with, of course, Newt in the top right and Shambler in the bottom left of Axiom by Biddyby, this is still something that I figured I w is worth casting because Terran hasn't actually changed really at all in the patch since the March Invitational A, which was the last release patch. And we're kind of throwing these patches out once every other week or so. Uh, and yeah, the, the only balance changes have come in for the Protoss, the Artisan, the Cantavis, the Bargas. Those are three units that have been modified in minor ways. The Zerg obviously received some adjustments to the Excitralisk and the Elmaxilisk, but they crucially uh, received new units, the Chabrathalor, the Acrimnalisk, the Algoztalisk. And of course that all comes from the Trogrant Chat. Or the Chocro Chazel. So check that out if you feel like it. It's a pretty exciting time since Zerg are getting their units, sort of their tech tree kind of fleshed out and uh, finished up. And that, of course, means that there's uh, there's going to be more commentary here with some exciting new features. But in this game, it's all Terran. So there you go. 2XY, that means cross, indeed. Shambler just uh, teaching new to thing or two. Actually, I'm not sure. This must be an older version of... Yes, so I've, I've modified a lot of the ramps in Axiom, so this is also on a little bit of an older version of the map. The uh, modified version is indeed going to be used in our competitive map pool, and both of these players, as Terran, shockingly enough, in Shambler's case, will be playing in the context of that tournament, so you will be able to see them. Uh, Shambler will be in Group D, the final group, and I'm not sure where I'm going to slot Nude in just yet as of the time of recording, but I'm sure that'll change pretty soon. Vulture's coming out. I thought for both of our players, it's actually going to be a double Fulcrum with no unit coming out from Shambler. Uh, that's pretty interesting. What does he want to do next to that? Is He's really holding on to it. Okay, now queuing up a Vulture. He's really holding on to that money for quite a while. This one obviously already out, so that's going to hunt down the worker. A very small uh, little bit of optimization that you can do, I think, that more people should probably do, is if they're being chased by a unit that they're worried is going to come straight over to their base, they can take their worker scout and kind of move in the opposite direction. In that case, it was a little bit hard, but Shamba could have you know, moved behind here or all the way up to the top right, ideally, you know, away from this ramp, right? But this ramp hasn't been extended in this version of the map, so of course uh, it'll be a little bit easier to hold. Uh, and one thing to point out about vultures in Cosmonarchy, they're very different than vultures in StarCraft 1. Uh, they only have two mines. The mines are lobotomy mines, which means they stun targets if they go off, and no matter what, they always slow targets. The slow kicks in after the stun if the stun is applicable. And that means that, you know, if you, even if you blow up the mine, you'll still get stunned, right? So it can be kind of useful. Like, we've seen it in the past where Nude has harassed, uh, you know, say, Hamsters, Protoss, by, like, putting a mine down and the mine goes off. And even if it doesn't stun the workers, it, it might still go for, um, you know, something like a, a worker slow for a little while. Now, we clearly see that Nude is planning a drop here. He's got the star pad coming. That's going to give him access to the Trojan. He's also added on the Palladium. Same deal for Shambler, believe it or not. And that is going to lead towards a fast phalanx. Now, there's going to be three vultures heading across, and Anchor started on the way out. I think what uh, Shambler is going to be able to do here, another thing to point out, vultures are not mine safe. There's no such thing as a unit that's mine safe now, so you're actually going to see two out of three of the vultures get stunned. This is going to buy Newt a little bit of time. That's going to clear the first two. Remember that his other vulture had mines, but was not used, right? So that's a little bit interesting there. Obviously, in this situation, we've got multiple uh, vultures going down for Newt, uh, but... Uh, his anchor gets up, so never mind. It's not multiple after all. Shambler will instead end up leaving that without too much value. And it's actually Wraiths out of the star pad. I thought for sure that was going to be a drop because you can pick up sieged phalanxes. They take up the entire cargo hold of the Trojan. There was one patch of StarCraft II that had this feature in uh, for Terran uh, Medivacs uh, that some people may remember. It's triple star pad. So Newt doubling down. This is a tricky little play he likes to do sometimes. He'll go for like fast, you know, triple star pad. Go for a, a, a Wraith Overwhelm. And when you're TVT, and your opponent's likely got a Palladium, although that hasn't been scouted. I don't. Oh, his, his Mason was here for a while. I might have scouted that. Got the quarry coming up. We even have Anti-Drop over here. It's kind of interesting that he's already doing that. I wonder if he didn't get his Vultures deep enough to scout the, the Star Pad, so that's interesting. I guess he's just setting it up in general, or maybe he's played some games that didn't get submitted uh, in this particular set, and that's where he's getting that info from. Nonetheless, obviously, we do have access to 
some pretty interesting strategies out of Newt. The fact that he is going to go for the one Fulcrum Palladium versus the two Fulcrum with one Palladium, you know, one add-on. Uh, it's kind of similar to how it would work out in uh, StarCraft One, except obviously the Palladium is very expensive. So it does delay your, your Tier 2 tech if you're going to be going for that. It's more like a Tier 1.5, except... I mean, maybe it's more like a tier 1.75 or something where you round up to tier two. It's it's odd to say that, but that's because like the Goliath is a really powerful unit. It's kind of seen as a powerhouse and that doesn't require an add-on. Then there's the Scrapyard, which gives you the Blackjack and the Matador, which can be very powerful units as well. And that's like a separate add-on. So that's kind of seen as 1.5. Now, Shambler does have a nice little bit of Vulture coverage over here. If the if any Air Force is going to leave, they got to leave on the right-hand side. Uh, or, I guess, very much hugging the top strip. And, you know, the right-hand side seems pretty applicable here. One thing that you can say about Newt's Star Pad placement is that he could put them a little bit further down if he wanted his rallies to reinforce a bit faster. But nonetheless, it's not going to be the end of the world if that doesn't happen. Uh, he is massing up quite a few rates. And the fact that Shambler doesn't see a an expansion here is a pretty big tell. Because Shambler himself is getting a second ministry. He's got that constructed instead of a treasury. So he knows his opponent, despite the fact that Shambler himself is taking a very slow amount of time here. He knows that his opponent is taking a long time to take an expansion. Uh, because he has this vulture here. He has this vulture here as well. And he's not canvassing the map looking for other dots, but um, I gotta be honest, even though there's anti-drop, there is no anti-air. Not a single anti-air unit. So I predict we are about to see some typing. Despite having a nominal worker lead with four worker production queues up, he has no watchdogs. He has nothing coming out of these fulcrums at all, let alone something that can attack air. And the magic number of wraiths is here more than the magic number required to one-shot masons. We are about to see a word per minute massacre. Mason kills per minute, anybody? There's a watchdog now setting up, but obviously you can just pick off that since uh, you do have the requisite number and the watchdog could not be repaired by anything else. Looks like just narrowly one of these watchdogs should, no, actually not able to get it off. Not, got two coming in over here in the natural. More wraiths streaming on in. Desperately trying to make a madrigal out of this fulcrum, but I'm not sure, I mean, okay, it has the anti-air mode, right? So there is that, but... Uh, Oh, you know what? This is the is this the old anti armor? Yeah, this this isn't even the new one, so it's not even going to help him out there. I guess that is something that did get changed, after all, uh, for Terran. Uh, nonetheless, though, uh, obviously the the old magical not going to be nearly as useful versus the Thrace stack. We don't even get a GG, just a rage quit. That's how Shambler likes to go his game. So there you go, the gambit works. You know, Shambler learning Terran at this stage. Um, these games, I guess they must have been played before the March Invitational A. Then so uh, Newt's coming back into things. Shambler's learning Terran and does not. Com you know, completely doesn't expect the, the Wraith Mass. Expects maybe a drop or something, but not a Wraith Mass. And so, uh, some, ni some nice play from Newt to, to really just kind of counter his opponent uh, without Chambler having any idea what's coming. And so we do have a second game, so let's see what happens in that one. All right, boys, we are back with Chamberlain in the bottom left yet again. Newt in the top right. Axiom will still be our map. Hashtag our map by hashtag our guy, Biddy B. Biddy B's got two maps in the Empire class map pool right now. And as a word of uh, sort of, I guess, a little bit of information. So the way that the map pool works is that for the invitationals and the tournaments in general, I will select eight one versus one maps and one FFA map. Uh, and so the, the, the eight one versus one maps are always essentially... Um, you know, right now we only have eight one versus one maps in the, the pool currently. And those are considered, but the Empire pool or whatever, the Empire directory in your in your folder is going to reference maps that are good enough to be one versus one maps. And so that's obviously the, the core idea behind that. Uh, so this time Shambler will have a faster Fulcrum, interestingly enough. It looks like Nude is going to go for a slightly slower one. It feels like this is slower than his one last time, but maybe not by a significant difference. Anyhow, uh, besides all of that, it's just worth pointing out that uh, Axiom and Derelict are both bidding me maps, and they are both indeed in the map pool. Uh, on the new version, we obviously have the uh, sponsor cards that Biddy B graciously donated towards, but those are not in this version because this is an older game, uh, so you can keep an eye out for those. And yeah, it's just uh, it's one of those things that I like. I, I like to see more people making maps and, and having them find success in the within the game and stuff. I, I think stuff like that is really cool. Uh, obviously, I don't have as much time as I used to to make maps, and the maps that I am making is a little bit more focused on content, although I did get commissioned to make two FFA maps by the Shambler. Uh, so that those are now available uh, for those interested. A little bit of Mason slapstick over here, but a Fulcrum making a Vulture on both sides. Second Fulcrum started for the Shambler. Will we see similar antics? One thing Newt likes to do is he likes to do his move 
you know, whatever his move is, if it's star pad, if it's like a proxy stockade or whatever, like whatever silly cheesy stuff he was planning, he likes to make that move and then never make it again if it's like in a set. At least, you know, maybe that's different in practice sets or whatever. But, uh, you know, somebody like Nablime is a little bit more likely to try to do the move over and over again. And uh, it's kind of interesting to me that that's something that hasn't happened in that context for... Wow, this is a really old version of Axiom, I'm just realizing, because this is all low ground in the uh, modern version. That's really funny. Look at this, Newt setting a trap with the mine. There you go, he's gonna be able to capitalize upon that with his two vultures, so Shambler only gonna get one shot off in return. Needs to pull his vulture back. I love the little thrusters over here. I think Shambler is trying to do the same kind of thing with his mines, just laying traps in all sorts of different locations. He does get the stun off, but he's not really in a position to capitalize upon that. He only just now got his second vulture. So, depending on how this fight gets taken... Ooh, slipping by. Not actually going to trigger that mine. However, it might happen on the way back. Yep, there we go. Now we can see an engagement flanking in from the north. This is a very minor little micro battle here. It looks like uh, just barely Newt will end up being the winner of that initial engagement, but obviously... I'm uh, not really going to be able to get too much there. Judging by the vulture count, though, as he puts down a ministry on the low ground, he should definitely know that there are uh, two fulcrums up for Shambler. However, his early pressure seems to have made Shambler completely uh, overlook the idea of moving ahead with his vultures, right? He absolutely could come up here and see if he can go for it. So just a, just a couple thoughts anyway, something to, to keep in mind for sure. Ministry halfway done constructing. Second fulcrum on the way. I'm interested in seeing what happens over here. I, I think... There's a good chance that Newt can hold, but be at a little bit of a deficit. Like, he should lose a couple of workers here, depending on, you know, how aggressive uh, Shambler is with this. The anchor is actually going to absorb the initial shot from the Vulture. There needs to be some movement micro over here. And now the Phalanx trying to track those targets, but not quite able to. So losing two Masons in the middle of constructing things, that is going to force the Phalanx to pull off. A Vulture finishes, so Masons are going to come on down. Not canceling that is pretty crucial. You know, th this is early stages of the game. You can't necessarily afford to do stuff like that. Focusing down the enemy vulture is a good move because it means no more mines, no repairs are going to come in. And look at that. We have no additional worker casualties, thankfully, for Newt's sake. But his expansion is up. Uh, the ministry is about 75% complete here for Shambler, so he won't be too far behind in terms of tempo. But he did do a good job of moving over here and at least getting a little bit of worker damage. Uh, feels like I don't know if he had any mines left over because he obviously did relay some of these mines in this location. If he had any mines left over, it might have been a good good shout there. Look at this preemptively going for four Cyclops here is Shambler. I can pretty confidently say that's um, a response to how the star pad stuff worked out in the last game. And technically, you're still okay if your enemy attacks you with like two vultures or whatever. Uh, so it's not really the end of the world to go Cyclops in the matchup and definitely can insulate you versus the air. Uh, meanwhile, Palladiums are gonna start spinning up some phalanxes when the money is there. Uh, Ministry has landed. We have, you know, a decent amount of saturation over here, actually, Newt doing a pretty good job, although he's a little undersaturated at, at your home. Remember, in, in Cosmonarchy, you want two per mineral field, and then uh, after that, any additional worker past that is a little bit less efficient than if you were to put it on a new, new base. So the, the tempo of which you transfer workers is very different now. All these mines going to go ahead and pop, and that's going to give Shambler plenty of warning. However, it does kind of blacken the map out. Sure, one of these vultures will go down as a result of that last mine, which is nice, uh, since he's revealing that he has Cyclops now as well. But definitely something you want to keep in, uh, tabs in. We've got uh, Trojan coming, interestingly enough, so I think we're going to see the famed drop this time around. I did this to Newt, and it felt very silly. And since that this game, like the, after this game, and not because of this game, but just in general, one of the things we have done is we've increased the delay before a uh, uh, unit outside of a Trojan uh, or any sort of transport, as soon as they unload, they're going to have a weapon cooldown be put on them. So uh, you might actually be able to see why that's going to happen here in this game. It might be a nice little uh, instructional little display of why we ended up doing that. Now, we do have an anchor. It's going to be loaded up with two of these Cyclops. The other two, presumably, are going to be free to pursue the incoming Trojan. Just sharking out there a little bit, trying to get a little bit more uh, understanding of where things are. we got a nice mine here, nice vulture there. Not great coverage from either our player as far as, like, general map presence goes. Although these Cyclopses are indeed going to move across the map. And we have a Trojan, or sorry, a Madrigal, a Cyclops, a Vulture with some nice mines as well. Uh, we'll see where that ends up going, because if it ends up landing over here, it could be really bad. Yeah, look at that. I love this. Nice little play here coming out of Shambler. Obviously, the, the uh, Trojan would have been the prime target there, but it looks like in this situation, he might be able to escape. 
probably the bi big difference maker there is the the magical not av actually having its uh, anti-air revision in this particular version that they were playing in there. But that was really good. That was really slick. And that I think that kind of play, honestly, it short circuits the whole unload stuff uh, for sure. Vultures are going to shark on in here. Cyclops do not do very well versus Mech. Uh, Nablime would think so, but... Oh, never mind. Nablime proven correct. Obviously, Cyclops are just the best unit. Um, but yeah, one of the things I was saying at the beginning of the game, actually, is that Nablime is the kind of guy to try the same strategy over and over again, even if it's not working, to see how, how good it can be. He actually spoke a little bit about this when he was casting with me in the March Invitational A, so kind of interesting to get that comparison. You know, we compare that to Newt, who has gone for the tech. He is going to be going for Tier 2. There's the Atlas. Uh, meanwhile, on the side of Shambler, he's just adding a third and presumably fourth Fulcrum after that. So he will be going for... and then a Stockade after. Okay, interesting. He's He's got plenty of support over here. Looks like his Phalanxes were able to round off a, a resounding successful shot. I wonder if there was a... Ooh, well, he almost destroyed his own Vulture there. I wonder if there was like a mine interaction or something. That's why the, the Mortars hit. Look at this lovely render from DF. I mean, just tell me that's not pure art. Tell me this isn't way better than the default. Come on, man. Come on, man. So definitely going to go up to a heavier production in terms of what uh, Shambler is doing. Uh, something that uh, another comment from Nablime recently was that he thinks st staking the tier uh, one on multiple bases and powering off of the army should be called the Newt style. But Shambler kind of showed it off to begin with, right? He was the one who was trying to spend his money all without actually ascending the tech tree per se. He definitely did like to do that versus Jackie Lansky, for example, uh, in Group D of, of the Invitational A. By the way, that will there will be a rematch between those two in, in Group D. So hope you guys are keen on that one because both of the players have been playing their races a bit more frequently. I think Jack has actually gotten a lot more games in recently than Shambler, but still very interesting. Adding a couple of extra Fulcrums is Newt not going to be one to be left behind. I'm noticing a pr profound lack of scouting the opponent. Obviously, uh, Newt has played some Brood War. Shambler is more of a homegrown player, so his lack of scouting is probably just due to lack of familiarity with the race. He's still adapting or, or learning or whatever. Uh, but, you know, Newt might be a bit more familiar with the idea of just going for, you know, commsats. But there are no commsats in Cosmonarchy. Uh, it's it's com Cosmonarchy, not commsat monarchy. Come on, dude. Anyway, I'll leave the dad jokes for somebody else to do to make. But uh, we do have an Atlas coming in, in the natural here. It's kind of an interesting choice. I'm not sure what this patrol path is. Oh, no, I for I fixed this earlier, too, but that that's a really funny bug that uh, apparently <laughs> apparently is there. Uh, oops, Biddy B made an oopsie trying to... I thought he was, like, patrolling here to here, but in, in fact, he's actually just never able to get over there because of a terrain bug. Reservoir being capped. Okay, so we're, we're going to see a more tech-focused play out of Newt here, it looks like. Capping his geysers in his main natural and his newly established third. Uh, his third is a little bit slower to rise up than Shambler's was, but I still think that overall, despite the worker advantage for Shambler, it's actually a pretty even game because I haven't yet seen that the ability to capitalize upon worker advantages here in the level of play that we've seen so far. But I do like this little defensive Maginot line. I am a little bit worried that there's not enough, you know, mines or, you know, front line or anything for it. There's definitely no, like, uh, anchor or anything like that. Uh, definitely something to keep in mind. Nothing, no sentinels or anything like that. But, hey, if you can skimp on stuff like that, you can definitely get into a pretty good spot for... Oh, no, his mine is going to die. Ah, oh, Cyclops overrated. I mean, overpowered. Fuck. Let it slip. This vulture by the Shambler is 5 HP away. Somehow a lobotomy mine has a, has made its way next to that mineral field. I assume what happened is that, like, <laughs> it dragged or something. I, I actually don't know. Not sure what happened there. Only the one add-on, though. That's kind of interesting. We've got the Vestry. We've got the Commandment. So it looks like Nude is going to be gunning for Seraphs. That's an interesting choice. Another Ministry coming down. He's going to go ahead and leapfrog his Expo. I do like Nude's macro overall. I think that it's um, pretty solid. We've got double Starport coming. We only had the one starport here for Newt. Uh, he's actually floating a little bit of more resources than Shambler is, despite me complimenting his macro. Obviously, Shambler is also ahead in the ministry department as well, something that I glossed over. Uh, and yes, he's only now noticing that the ramp is bugged. So, at some point, I'm sure, yeah, I, I, I fixed that, not Biddy B. So, maybe Biddy B fixed it on his own local copy or something, but I feel like they probably didn't report that. <laughs> Classic move. Another Palladium finally being added on to this secondary Fulcrum. 
And the armies are looking very inflexible right now, but that's where air comes into play. We saw a very, very truncated version of that in the previous game, where obviously Newt went for the triple star pad Wraith push, and it was kind of a bit of a gambit here. Nine o'clock being taken by the Shambler. In the meanwhile, a Trojan flying over. This is actually just going to end up being a bait. There's nothing in it, so we'll see what uh, whether you know, you know whether Shambler reacts to this more negatively or what, but now I'm just going to fly over it and see. Yeah, nothing in there. Just to scout. That's the most scouting that anybody's actually done with this, but look at this. Clearing the way for the Seraph to make its way over here. Do we have an anvil anywhere? No add-ons anywhere at all, actually, so it will just be a radiate. Right on top of a bunch of masons. Look at that. Now, he does end up losing it. I think he might kill a couple of these masons. Mason, uh, Irradiate does deal less damage than it used to, but it does seem like it's still more than enough to, to deal with a lot of these, unfortunately. So, you know, it's like pretty good overall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess it's like 11 workers or something like that. So that, that thins the herd a little bit. Now he's within, a, if he gets another one of those off, he'll actually be even in terms of workers. But for how long is the question? We do have an anvil starting now. Another Seraph just finished in production. Second one is already up on the field. Looks like, um, yeah, honestly, Seraphs could be a really big problem for the... Ma There's only one Madrigal to protect versus anti-air. We had Valkyries be made and scrambled, and now we've got some Gorgons on the way. But really, there's not much anti-air, right? And so if you can just use the... Uh, yeah, the, the, there's a Cleric healing that. So if you can just use the Seraph to repeatedly, you know, throw, throw shade, you know, cast some Irradiates... Uh, multiple clerics ended up dying in that situation. Uh, unfortunately, this wounded phalanx is just narrowly out of uh, out of range. And actually, there's no anti-air over here either, which is really funny. Oh, no! Double cliff advantage. That's going to give you plus four weapon range down this section. So that you do have to be pretty careful about that. Valkyrie's hounding the Seraph. Again, no zero anti-air. No Goliaths. Nothing at all. We got some Goliaths queuing up now behind those phalanxes and in the add-on-less fulcrums. But that's another second uh, dead Seraph. And it looks like Anut is going to give it a chance. Can he charge forward? I don't think he knew that the Sentinels had been erected up there. He is going to immediately tuck tail and fly away. And, you know, he only lost some vultures, honestly, and a mason that was oddly there. So it's not really the end of the world, but he does need to think about how he's going to climb on up. I think he may have tasked his units to come to the middle of the map, and that was pretty clearly a mistake considering what they're doing right now. Uh, so, yeah, he's going to go ahead and, and summon them back. Uh, he might end up losing the Shaman. Yeah, that's uh, that's an unfortunate loss. Uh, Vulture is now taking a little bit more of an aggressive stance. Uh, probably one of the main reasons why this middle got uh, opened up is that it's actually really difficult to maneuver ground armies into... Like, if somebody were to take the middle, it, like, I don't know where you go from there. The ramps all got opened up as well, though. So, in general, it's actually a lot more reasonable to approach the middle of the map. We got another ministry coming on. That's going to be destined for this base here. We haven't seen anybody use it yet, but you can th send uh, advanced workers to mine from like the reservoir and stuff, return to the treasury. Uh, and so obviously this base can also be transitioned to as well. Maybe thinking about three o'clock over here, depending on what he wants to do. He's got some Goliaths and such lingering around. Seraph wrapping around the bottom of the map. We had this one vulture blocking this ministry at six o'clock as well. So we're starting to get into a really nice macro game over here with multiple Gorgons, multiple Wyverns flying out as well. So we did see Gorgons being trained earlier. I actually don't know where they are. Sharking up over here, seven of them. In fact, no anti-air to speak of. Targeting an incomplete ministry right now. Another one has already been started. Where is the anti-air? He's got some Goliaths and mixed in with this group, but that's it. That's all he's got for anti-air. He's put down no additional infrastructure despite a crazy amount of resources. So it does feel like Newt's macro was slipping in this particular particular match. Doesn't mean that he's out of the game just yet, even though obviously Shambler has a, a significantly higher worker count. Uh, I think a lot is going to matter with uh, this bottom right counter attack here. Shambler is going to look away from his Gorgons at a pretty pivotal time, considering the Goliaths are starting to dismantle this push, and not really that many workers were killed. He kind of slowed down the approach of the Ministry, got an Irradiate even for good measure. This Vela, this Ministry should be lifted, but it doesn't look like Shambler's paying attention to it. He's going to end up losing quite a lot of the workers, and look at that, he's not even going to lift it after all. Down it goes, and we have a, a nuclear launch detected as well. Look at this. Happening over here in the in the nine o'clock position, three o'clock being taken at the same time. Control reestablished, reasserted, but a lot of masons did end up going down. There's the nuke. It does go off and wipe out multiple workers, and it's even going to go ahead and destroy the reservoir, blocking out the advanced gas harvesting. There's no anti-air over here though, and wyverns and gorgons galore have arrived, even clearing out the seraph that was rending their armor. Another round can happen over here. 
Yep, it's even been armed there. So you can see when you have this uh, overlay over, it does mean that they're trying to charge a nuke. It also could mean that they're doing this so that the reads are not exactly clear. And we do need to, you know, change the color probably to like green or something like that. But this is a pretty big attack over here and we don't really have that much. We see that Nude is responding to this air switch from Shambler by building a lot of Goliaths. And the Gorgons and Wyverns cannot deal with the Goliaths as long as they're in relatively even numbers here. Uh, in this situation. So Shambler's gonna try it, but his Wyverns are getting hitched on the Ministry. Remember those projectiles get uh, blocked by ar high armor targets. And so, you know, the fact that it has three armor pen means that the Ministry does indeed block it. So it lost a lot of workers, but hey, we're still above 100 workers for both players. Despite this base being taken down, the, the Valkyries did indeed get handled over there. If this was Niblime, he'd be, be accompanying the Seraph with an Azazel to dematrix it during its nuke. Definitely a, a dastardly strategy, I would say. More and more ministries resuming production as this, I guess you could call that like a 10 o'clock base or something is being set up. The Gorgons are going to get sandwiched here and so too are the Wyverns, which are much slower. Uh, over here, the, the Phalanxes are trying to deal with these Goliaths, which can't really stand up to the Phalanxes. Like there's too many uh, on the Phalanx side. Uh, but, the, the, you know, Newt's probably never been in this situation where Phalanxes are attacking Goliaths. So he doesn't necessarily know and he's going to look back here and realize, oh shit. You know, uh, that's not a favorable trade. Three o'clock still needs saturation. We've got another nuke, not yet on standby from that anvil in Newt's main. Uh, not even on the natural either, despite having two anvils. Now saturating three. Nine's been buzzing this whole time and six is gonna come online pretty soon too. So we're up to one, two, three, four, you know, five bases for Newt. And it's the same right now for Shambler in terms of efficacy. He can look back at bottom right and get a, a nice boost as well. Worker count has stabilized for both players. But these phalanxes do represent a pretty big threat. Now, with the Seraph, this does get equalized a little bit because the four armor will slowly get rendered by presence of the Seraph. The Irradiate also helps out quite a bit. And, of course, supporting fire from additional phalanxes. Another round of air uh, units, particularly a lot of wyverns. Fifteen wyverns are going to come down the middle. And I don't really see any air splash. The Daedala is on the way, but this could be a really scary death push, especially since phalanxes were hooked up there. The Goliaths are going to scramble to return. We have got no air units and no anti -air. I guess we've got some Goliaths over here at the 10 o'clock position, but the, wy the wyverns are charging on forward. There's nothing in the anvil, so there's no danger in attacking that. Where normally if you blow it up when the uh, structure is it still has the the nuke in it, it will actually go off. But nothing really like that here. The Gorgon's here just to protect versus the uh, potential for Valkyries, but we actually don't have anything like that. What is the reaction in this situation? He's got the one Seraph irradiating the gas harvesters. Not a bad shout considering Shambler is still behind in tech. And hey, this Dale didn't get interrupted. Remember, the worker count is close enough at this point that, like, yes, losing a lot of workers does kind of hurt, but these were depleted bases already. He's going to try to pick off the anvil. He is successful. That is a pretty costly structure. He's even going to go for the reservoir, which he should be able to secure. The ba the guys at 10 o'clock should move on over to 12 so that they can defend that. Um, there's only 11 wyverns left. I know that sounds like a lot, but you can even see here the, the worker pull. Eh, they're all in a line. They should probably decollide to spread out so that they don't all die like that. That is a lot of dead workers. My goodness. Nonetheless, the Seraph has continuously put a, been a thorn in the side. The problem is that the Gorgons are going to finish pretty soon, and if, you know, Shambler has the wherewithal to respond to that, he will absolutely run roughshod over. That Anseal not getting attacked by the Wyvern should have clued Newt in if he's not already aware that those units are indeed going to be anti-ground only. No response to any air units, so he can go for a group of, you know responses in that respect with Valkyries or whatever. Now, again, the, the herd is thinning. You know, there's a, a watchdog over here. A lot of Masons are going to end up getting mop, wop, mopped up immediately, basically. But, you know, down to six Wyverns, this is a much more manageable count now. The problem is there's been a horde of 15 Gorgons that have been uh, created now, and Phalanxes are even going to go ahead and knock on the door as well. The Ministry being constructed on site at the 4 o'clock location is probably not going to see the light of day, as I think Newt is can't really stop the bleeding. He's only now killing the initial airwave. And this is another round of like, just like what happened in the first game where there was no scouting, no follow-up, no sense that maybe it was triple star pad. And just like what Shambler had to deal with earlier on where he didn't really know whether what, what Newt exactly was doing in this very game, Newt didn't really do much scouting of his own to figure out that four star pads or star ports rather were coming online with no space for add-ons and indeed no add-ons much later into the game. Now, don't get your don't get it twisted. The Daedala is up. 
So even though he's lost three o'clock, he's got a def definitive tech advantage. The problem is he doesn't really have a lot of mineral income. His 3k float won't last him too long. And adding nanite assemblies sounds great, but you gotta actually stay alive long enough for them to matter. And it looks like we're gonna see this 10 o'clock base be targeted next. 10 and 11, I should say. And he never really took 10. Blackjack's moving on up. There's uh, some phalanxes over here. One of them not siege, not the end of the world. But obviously with some focus, that push can happen. We've got 12 Goliaths over here. This force shouldn't actually be able to do too much as a result of that. They're trying to pick off the extremities, but the Shaman's going to deploy to help with the healing. And there's just too much anti-air over here with the Goliaths. They scale super well into the mid-game as a result of this. And look at this. We're even going to get that ground force starting to get aggroed. Goliaths moving around at 12 o'clock as well, maybe seeing King to reinforce, but I don't think he has to worry about this. So this is kind of the perfect opportunity for Newt to use his tech advantage to come back into the game. He started a second nanite somewhere. Looks like he found space for it above his fulcrums. That's a pretty large structure. Uh, the air stack is gonna go ahead and shark over here to try to kill off some phalanxes. He just moved a couple of Goliaths around over here as he's trying to take 10 o'clock. So that is a little bit awkward. The Ant Seal narrowly escaping there because while it's the shield is up, it doesn't actually get affected by the slow. And, you know, spare Goliaths over here are going to actually be pretty effective at uh, dealing with some of the stuff. Even You saw even one Goliath stayed alive for a very long amount of time. The refocus is going to come over here. Still no stacked anti-air. We've got a Minotaur started. We saw Minotaurs in a game. I can't remember. I think it was... Yeah, it was actually Shambler building them against Newt uh, on I Titan Forge. So, funnily enough, we're in a similar position where... Actually, I'm not sure that they're the best option over here. You could go for centaurs, and they would be moving faster, so they'd respond to these threats a lot better, and they deal splash, where the minotaurs just have multi-target, so they scale fine, I guess, but not as well as the centaurs do. Now, nonetheless, it looks like Nude is going to hold out on hope that he can do that. He's depleted his mineral bank. He's not really mining super well from his main natural or now, indeed, his 12 o'clock location. Uh, sure, technically, uh, 10 o'clock is coming up in line and 11 o'clock has been up and running for a while. Uh, and he's wiped the, this wave of air, but there's another wave where that came from because all of these are coming online. He's slowly been saturating this base, which is really funny because the fact that 4 o'clock is going to you know, be floated a ministry over towards and then Shamba's going to realize, wait, you had this base the whole time is kind of silly. Nobody's taken the middle bases yet. I mean, it's really easy for phalanxes and such to just punish that. So in this particular matchup, it makes a lot of sense. But uh, definitely a funny little interaction there. Shambler thinking about taking uh, 3 o'clock maybe. I see Newt's uh, camera moving over here. He's going to try to march some Goliaths down there, but the phalanx horde is going to be way too much. And we are massing up Minotaurs. So eventually that's going to be a pretty good option. Now those Goliaths did indeed get shellacked. More of them coming on fire down here towards that 9 o'clock position. Finally taking a th his third base location yet again. So for those keeping score, that's basically a two o'clock spot. I think the Ministry will be okay, but now the Phalanx has ended up being able to get, get some shots off. So the Ministry will have to get canceled, presumably. Yep, there it is. You know, at this point, his bank is low enough that, you know, losing 400 minerals for nothing is actually going to be pretty painful. That's two Goliaths, by the way, in terms of mineral count. Well, a little bit less now that they're 175 instead of 200, but still pretty comparable. Picking off some of these uh, units is still good value, though. Obviously, makes Shambler have to reinforce his positions. Got uh, Speaking of, this is very, very vulnerable to heavy air, or even like an air stack of uh, Newt's own. He still has a Seraph hidden over here. At some point, he could reactivate that secret agent. But there's a pretty big air stack coming online here. Nanite assemblies for Shambler as he has completed his own Daedala. Where did he put that, anyway? Is that also in his natural? Knowing him, it's probably in his fourth base or something. Yeah, <laughs> there it is, surrounded by Sentinels. Classic move. And this is the kind of TVT that we see here so far from, from players who are, you know, in Newt's case, coming back and learning the new changes. And in Shambler's case, learning a race that he's never really played before, right? So, kind of interesting there. We do have five Minotaurs moving out towards the bottom right. That is correctly recognized by Newt as the spot of Shambler that is still mining the most, right? It has, you know, not depleted mineral fields in multiple bases. Looks like the Irradiate did come back into to bite Shambler, but he responded with four Gorgons. And now he's kind of like walking into a bunch of Goliaths over here. Uh, there's not that many, so this will indeed end up backfiring, but many more Goliaths are going to go ahead and move up there. And these Phalanxes are going to be cleaned up, even more of them coming up to offer themselves to the uh, Maws of Death, as a couple of Minotaurs are indeed going to be taken care of. Here's all the Goliaths getting killed, but hey, 12 o'clock did completely die. So somehow there was a Mason over here for Shambler. I don't know how that happened, but that's silly. Uh, he's got, I, thought, I was gonna say he has plenty of a mineral bank of his own, so he doesn't even need to cancel that, but he was actually sub a thousand, so that kind of hurts. And I think maybe he's gonna be able to wipe the Goliaths over here. 
So that's a little bit scary because now the, the Minotaurs have to go respond to that threat instead of being able to link up with the rest of the force. Because now, you know, we've got some Valkyries, but we've also got Minotaurs of his own, which is really funny that that's the play. Uh, on top of all of that, we've got more and more Valks being made. Valks can be pretty good versus capital ships, but the Minotaurs in particular are very, very effective with them. You can see what uh, Shambler is trying to do is like hit the damage onto them while their backs are turned because they take less damage. The shield overlay that you'll sometimes see is because they're facing their target. So we got three Minotaurs versus the five or so that are still here from Newt. He's been kind of stutter stepping around, but he needs to be worried. Yeah, there was three more over here from the north coming in for a flank, and that's going to completely snipe out his forces. Again, I think Centaurs would have been a great choice for Newt. He would have gotten them online cheaper, faster, and they would have been much better versus the air stacks. On top of that, they move a lot faster, so you can outposition somebody who's going the same tech as you. But mass battle cruiser forever, even if they're called the Minotaur now. That's apparently the, the, the play here as Goliaths try to saunter on around. 12 o'clock was never reclaimed. There's this one wyvern over here. Now, finally, this base has been discovered at 4 o'clock. And, hey, three's even going to be taken by the Shambler. Oh, no! Minotaurs versus Masons. Mason, it's me, Minotaur. I like the... I really love the, the Watchdogs attacking the Ministry over here. Seraph moving in as well, seeing where it wants to go to the bottom right. Maybe it'll go unnoticed. Minotaurs only. That's the that's the play here so far. We've got four of them being production by at once by Shambler. That's due to his economic advantage. So I think the writing is on the wall now. But hey, the game is uh, still technically in play. I mean, a, a juicy nuke could go a long way if uh, we can get it armed. Looks like it is on the way. Yeah, double anvil. I know at least one of those was destroyed. So he rebuilt the one in the natural. I'm not sure about the main. I can't remember if it was destroyed or not. Looks like uh, 3 o'clock will take a while to get set up because even though there are Minotaurs over here, there's a lot of Goliaths, and Goliaths can fight Minotaurs, although obviously the high armor is pretty hard to deal with. You know, you're talking about a unit that has two armor pen, and you get plus two armor uh, when you're dealing with the uh, frontal assault, so you're actually getting reduced by four, except it's by eight because you're attacking twice. So instead of 20 damage, you're dealing 18. The Valkyrie sharking around trying to deal with the Minotaurs. And I think even with Focus Fire, there's too many Minotaurs here for the Goliaths. So that's one area where Minotaurs do undoubtedly do a lot better than Centaurs, is the fact that they are a lot more on the uh, tanky side, and they can stand up to direct engagements. Nuke is going to go live in the bottom right-hand location. We'll see if Shambler ever pays attention to that, but he's busy sniping all this stuff. And in reality, shutting down this 2 o'clock location, and once again pressuring the main production line for Newt, as he is completely out of money, trying to retake 12. Sure, you get your nuke off, you kill some workers, you're going to spread the irradiate around. I don't know if Shambler really pay cares too much. He's even going to go ahead and send his Gorgons out there. I would have honestly just thought about sending them around the, you know, through... Oh, look at this. He's even going to knock him in. We've got another one somewhere. Oh, look at that. He's going to nuke the reservoir. That's really funny. Well, the main engagement is happening over here, and Newt has no way of responding to it. If it was a defensive nuke, I would have maybe bought it. But, you know, at this current stage, he nukes the Valks and gets rid of the uh, Talos harvesting the reservoir. And, and that's a thing. In fact, nuking the reservoir is pretty good, since it uh, may means you have to reestablish it yourself if you want to benefit from the changes. Valks storming around, and they are indeed going to go ahead and pick off the Minotaurs. Again, no anti-air that's uh, actually splash here from Newt, so he can't deal with the Valk stack. I hate to be a broken record about Centaurs, but that would be another reason to consider them. Now, he has actually seemingly repulsed this attack, but at what cost, right? Thinking about maybe dropping another nuke here if he can get away with it. There it is. But there are nine Minotaurs encroaching upon 12 and 11. Oh, look at that. It's actually 11 Minotaurs. <laughs> Shambler wasn't sure about that. I mean, the thing is that you they can turn and fi face the uh, Valks relatively easily. So the Valks are much cheaper. And also, the Valks actually got buffed in the later stages, um, like after this tournament or after this patch or whatever, before the tournament, technically. Uh, so the Valks were actually made, I think, arguably better versus Battlecruiser now or versus uh, Minotaur, as it's called. Uh, but yeah, anyway, regardless, you saw a pretty nice meaty TVT there. L love to have that right after a dirty rush from Newt. And so Shambler strikes back with superior macro. 
But the, hey, these these are kind of oldish games, right? So you got to factor that in. Seeing both of these players on Terran uh, in March Invitational B, I'm going to be looking to see improvements in the macro department and the strategic department. And obviously, we're going to see non-mirror matchups in those as well. So I hope you guys are excited for that tournament. Stay tuned. We'll be casting all those games and bringing them to you. And in the meantime, just... Uh, kick around, drop a sub, maybe throw us a couple of dollary dues on the coffee link in the bottom right and enjoy Cause Monarchy because it's here to stay.